Right now, we're going to be talking about electrical. I've got Frank Cosolino. Everyone knows Frank. We've got him online. And we're going to be showing a clip from one of our shows. How are you doing, Frank? Pretty good, yourself? I'm pretty good. I want to show this clip first, and we're going to get in a little bit of electrical talk, and then I've got a favor I'm going to be asking you. But hold on. Let's watch this video. And he put in pot lights All the here. pot lights here. So I brought in my electricians. I said, do me a favor, run through the house, take a look. When they turned off the one circuit, guess how many lights went off on one circuit? 50. <laughs> You're only allowed 12. Oh my gosh. Devices per circuit. We have codes for a reason. Okay, so uh, Frank, you're used to this. I'm so used to this. Whenever you bring in a bad guy, it seems everything that touches wrong. Now, in electrical, it's supposed to be minimum code, both Canada, United States, 12 devices per circuit. Correct. That's really to control it. Never overload the breaker. Uh, long run, you don't want to run the wires that long neither. So everything's done for a reason. Something has changed in the code about this. Is that correct? That's correct. So if, you, if you've got LED pot lights and you're planning on using the LED, we can use what's called known load. Um, the code's always been there, but they've relaxed it a little because it used to be that if it was only lighting, you can use known load. Nowadays, they're saying under a renovation, you're removing one light fixture and you're going to replace it with four pot lights or even five. An LED pot light that would only consume 10 watts would still be less than that incandescent light bulb that would be 60 or even a 40 watt or some people may use a 100 watt bulb so the code is relaxed a little bit that way knowing that they're you know using now, that that's, that's only on a pot light is that correct only on a pot light yes but so we have the led surface light standard light is going to be 12 devices per circuit correct now, how many so you're saying it's not based on watts so how many led pot lights based on 10 watts i know there's some less watts but let's base it on 10 watts how many lights can I run on one circuit? 1,460 watts on a 15 amp circuit. Okay. So you can use 145. I got to do the math. 145. Okay. Is, is that kind of pushing it a little too far? Well, again, it comes down to wattage. If you're only consuming 140, you're, if you're only consuming, uh, you know, the known load, it's under the 15 amps. The breaker's not going to trip. You're not going to be overheating. Can you have issues with dimmers? Yes. Uh, you can have many other issues. I wouldn't suggest putting 145 pot lights on one switch in a home. Um, it's a pretty big home. I'd be using some smart controls for that. Yeah, it would have to be like a 10,000 square foot home. Here's my point to this one that uh, I don't know if I like this at all is that what that does is creates the opportunity to say, I've heard this, Frank told me this, this code, I'm allowed to put up 140 pot lights based on 10 watts. Now let's remember, each and every circuit is approximately 1,800 watts before to blow the breaker, is that correct? Yes, but you can only, you can only use up to 80% of that right. 1,800 watts. Right, which makes sense, because that way we're not maxing out. And if you never want to max, it's going to heat up the lines, et cetera. Having that many pot lights, what it's going to do, to, in my mind, it's going to tend to make people think that, well, if I can do this, I can do that. What it does is it steps outside what we're normally doing. And you know me, I'm, 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 I'm the guy that says you can't teach an old dog new tricks, which we should be, and that we should have changes within code, our value. I can go on and on and on, but that's another subject. I don't know if this is wise. I think it would be better to say, based on the 10 watts rather than 1,460 pot lights to be exact, I think you can say maybe 20, right? Like give it a limit that makes sense because maybe there is 20 pot lights in one room or maybe 25, 26, because it's usually an even number yeah. and not an odd number. But that would make more sense to me uh, based on per room or something. So maybe there's, is this, this is something you keep doing. You talk about code with all the big people out there to see what changes can be done and what, what makes sense. Is that right? That's correct. Yep, that is. What I'd always say is if you're doing a renovation and you're planning on doing it yourself, you're pulling out an electrical permit, I hope. And if you are pulling out the permit, then just talk to your inspector. I want, to talk, I want to talk about that. Sure. Now, that, that video we showed, that contractor 
stole their money. He conned them. He told them, he told everyone. He, he leaned their house. He sued them afterwards. And I mean, this guy should go to jail. As far as I'm concerned, I've had it up to here. I don't. There's no police force out there. Nothing out there well, that saves people from this happening to them. The changes are coming. So it depends on where. There's lots of good changes coming, especially I, in the area that I'm in. In electrical. <laughs> And that's the point that they can be fined up to fifty thousand dollars here in Canada. I know the states are working on it. Have they gotten there yet? No, they haven't as of yet. Okay, but remember, well. there, it goes state by state. So you may end up having, you know, the state of Illinois, for argument's sake, that may already have tight rules, and then in New York they haven't. So it goes state by state. Same thing here in Canada, where they go province by province. The province of Ontario is very, very tough, and uh, I think they need to be tougher. So good on them. Agreed. And there should be consequences for when you not only do Definitely. things wrong, but you actually affect the family's financial future terribly yes. because you're not a good person. I this said it. Because I spoke to the ESI, ESA guy. He's the Electrical Safety Authority. He came in. I told him all about him. I said, please go after him. Please find him. You have the legal right to do this. Did he? It didn't happen? Not that I know of, no. It doesn't come back to me. When when ESA decides to investigate on someone, they do that and it becomes, you know, they can't share that information. So I wouldn't know one well, way or the other. Don't know. Sorry? We actually don't know. We don't, yes. Okay, all, all right. right. I mean, I mean, that's probably better than anything. I just hope to hell that he got a big fine. He got a kick in the rear end is what he, he totally means. Mm -hmm. And he leaves these people alone. I'm going to speak to them again and we'll find out more about that in the future. Any tips right now? Okay, any tips right now you want to offer to people that can work at home? Well, uh, again, uh, electrical is not a hobby. So I say that all the time. So if you know what you're doing, good. If you're a jack of all trades, good. Um, pull out the permits. They're there to protect you. You know, it's, it's people that are doing things and they're not within the code. Like code's bare minimum. You talk about this all the time. Like last thing you want is what I'm seeing on the screen. What is that? A, a receptacle inside a sink, like you, you can see what I see, right? Like I sure hope that's a joke. I hope so. I truly do. Um, either that or that's the incinerator, the the you know garbage disposal. You plug it in there. I don't know what to say. That's I mean, that is just the big end one. Of the, okay, that's that, real. I've seen those a million times. Okay, like if I had a dollar for each one of those, Mike. I'd have your money. <laughs> like I have a lot of money. I'm joking. I'd be helping people in trouble. This box has too many wires into it. Actually, also has a bell connector or a 12 volt in there too. Yeah. It's probably a doorbell transformer. 16 volt could be a 12. Um, yeah, actually, that box may actually be big enough for the amount of wires going in because that looks like it's a four by four, maybe a six by six. But um, any clips on the wires? Uh, looking at this, you can tell it wasn't done by a professional. It's nope. very sloppy. Uh, but yes, this is something we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Remember years ago, there's another one. Okay, so talk about this for a second. Wow, okay, so I have no idea what they were trying to do, but someone used your uh, famous duct tape there uh, to, to mark the wires, which is good. Okay. You got open air connections. Looks like one line is knob and tube um, under the white wires there. It looks like it's knob and tube and they just tapped in. Uh, that's an electrical fire just waiting to happen. There's a reason. It's waiting to happen. There's a reason why insurance companies no longer insure knob and tube, and it's because the wires are so old. They can't take the loads we put on them today. Nope. It is truly a fire hazard. More than likely, it's been manipulated over the years by Joe, Harry, Mary, and Terry that may have bought that house and made changes, and nobody really knows. So There's, there's no way that you take a home from 1920 and they haven't done a bathroom renovation or a kitchen renovation. So have they tampered around with the wiring? Chances are high that they have. How do they do it safely? Like, I haven't found one. You and I came up with an idea years ago. It was a test and troubleshoot program. And I really tried to tell people about this and encourage all electricians out there in the United States, Canada. I don't care if it's Australia because my shows are on the world. Yeah. Do a test and troubleshoot if you're ever worried about your electrical. It's only going to cost maybe, what, 600 bucks maximum to come in. Take a look at the whole house. Create a map and say, okay, here's what I found. Here's what needs to be fixed. This is safe. This is not safe. Here's what needs to be done right away in case you don't have enough money. 
Yeah. Simple advice, correct? I, I offer it to my clients all the time. Anytime that somebody picks up the phone and calls me, I'll take the time. I'll ask the questions. There are certain things that I can help out over the phone. Then there's certain things that until I take out my tools and start testing from circuit to circuit, no one's going to know what's wrong. So is it going to cost you money? Well, of course, someone's putting on their tool pouch and going to be doing some work. Will they be fixing anything? Not really. They're going to be giving you a checklist of exactly what needs to be done and minor fixes will be done. Make sure the connections are nice and tight. Install new devices so they look pretty. But the wiring behind the wall. So this would be perfect for anyone buying a house to do a test and troubleshoot right after they've had a home inspection and there's possibly an electrical issue. Hire Frank. Hire any type of Frank out there to do a test and troubleshoot to give you the advice you need before you purchase that house. Yes. Simple, right? Makes sense. You're spending, you know, in this area, you're spending a million dollars for a home that's going to need a hundred grand. Like it's 1.1 million minimum. And you're not going to worry about plumbing, electrical roof. Like you need to worry about these things. Home inspection, home inspections are very, very important. And you want something detailed, spend a little more. So we have a, a question here from Christine. And she has asked, any advice for someone considering getting a whole house generator? We are up on a ridge in NC. Not sure where that is. So it would be uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, sh I should know that. I love North Carolina. South Carolina. I filmed in both areas. Uh, it just didn't click into my head. So a whole house generator. I'm the guy that tells everyone, if you can afford it, get it. Because you never know when the power's down. You never know what the hell can happen out there besides a pandemic. I mean, there was times even here we were shut down for five to eight days. No electrical. Without a generator, you lose everything, especially if it's cold, frozen. You're going to have problems at home. Why not do it? How much money? Generator, generators right. make sense. Um, you can do from a small little portable generator just that will take care of the necessities in the home or you can go into the bigger, it all depends on price. It all depends on how much money you want to spend. We so you can back up the entire minimum. home. Let's go from the minimum. Let's do a minimum one that just does essentials, we'll call okay. it. Okay, we'll call that. Something, then, like that is just a, just something like that, it's just like a small little portable, let's take that champion that we've used a few times on your show. That little champion guy plugs in on one end, the other end, we'll put the male end that'll end up going on the home. From there, it goes into a little panel that would be beside your main panel, and only the the essential oh, loads. Freezer, uh, some lights in the house, right? Correct. So that would be about how much? That there, roughly, you're talking twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, and then you need to buy your generator. Okay. So, so your generator again. So it's going to cost you. Let's call it twenty five hundred. Anywhere from five hundred plus. So right. it's something to look into, I totally recommend it. And we should be prepared to be self-sufficient, including growing our own vegetables, which I do. Andrea, what is a whole house generator? It's a generator that backs up the entire home. So um, around 15K, is that correct? Yeah, there, there's up to 22K that we can do. Then you get into the liquid cooled, which they're bigger units. Generally speaking, gives you about 100 amps. So it's not really... Something that will back up an entire home, you're talking a lot more money. But what we see in residential is about 100 amps, roughly. Um, we've used it on your jobs a few times. Um, more than enough power. Is it enough for you to be cooking you know, Christmas dinner and entertaining 50 guests and you're running your generator? Maybe not. Um, well, race, actually it should be because it's, again, based on power consumption. Correct. So on. If your heat's on good, you have a hot tub running, we can go on and on. If you have all that going, you can bypass that 100 amp, and that's when the thing is going to shut down. It's going to be a problem. Exactly. So, but again, education is the key here. It's knowing what you – look, at, just use what you need. Don't go crazy. Don't – if the whole house generator will run the whole house, it just yes. won't it all at once. We don't want to be using the hot tub and having the AC running at the same time if we're on generator because we're going to be making that motor work extra hard. Think of your car and you're going up a hill. It's going to take more gas to get you up the hill. Same idea. That generator's running, providing you power. That's a good point. Pamela, she's uh, – oh, I just lost it. Let's see. Can I get Pamela back? Pamela, she's watching from Louisiana. Hi, Pamela. 
You gotta love this. People everywhere. Okay, here's Paula. I have one. My doorbell is busted. And how can I fix it? Do I need to call an electrician? Okay, so doorbells are tricky. It works on low voltage, 16 volts, generally speaking. Um, is it something you can do it yourself? The answer is yes. It the problem is it may end up being the actual doorbell, like the push button outside. The wire that goes from the push button to the actual chime, it could be that the chime is gone. From the chime, now we have the transformer. So the problem can be anywhere at those three or the wires in between. Um, Here's my advice. Try it. You're not playing with major electrical here. It's very low voltage. You're not agree. hurt. Go ahead and try it. And if you can't do it, then you call an electrician to come in and fix it. That's It's really that simple. But anything that we can actually try to touch, we should. Yes. Uh, and then there's things we shouldn't touch. Like, honey, will you take that wall down in between the kitchen and the living room? Uh, don't do that. That's really not smart. Odds are it's a load very wall. Frank, it's always fun talking to you. The last thing I'm going to ask you is I'm working on my deck. I got a little bit of electrical. I want to add some receptacles and everything. You know I can do it, but I'm going to call in a professional, and that's you. So if you don't mind, I'll get you a beer and dinner, and we'll do this one day soon. Okay. So uh, this weekend, next weekend, when are we thinking? Uh, maybe next week. All right. No problem. I'll give you a call. I'll have my people call your people. Thanks, buddy. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for being here. All right, this is been